Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Dan from DHTV and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to use the MacBook Pro trackpad. Now we're gonna be using the 16 inch MacBook Pro, but this is going to work with any MacBook Pros with the Force Touch trackpad. So pretty much 2015 and newer models. Let's get started. All right, so we've got the 16 inch MacBook Pro and what we wanna do first is open up our system preferences. You'll see it here on my dock. If you don't, open your launch pad and click system preferences. From here, you wanna to navigate to trackpad and open that up. And this is where all of your trackpad settings are located. Now in this video, we're gonna be going over point and click, scroll and zoom and more gestures, as well as all the additional options within each one of those tabs. But before we do that, we're gonna take about 30 seconds and go through some of the basics. So if you are a little bit more advanced, you can skip ahead. There's timestamps in the description of this video so you can skip to exactly what you wanna learn. For those of you who are new, basically navigating with this trackpad, it's pretty simple. You're gonna use one finger and you can navigate. You can see the cursor is moving around on screen. To open up applications, you can simply click once on the trackpad. It'll open up the application for you. Any links, it's a single click on the link to open them. Anything along the internet is for the most part going to be single click, so I clicked once on the back button. Scrolling, you take two fingers and you just scroll up and down. And double click is pretty much for opening files and folders. So we have this here. If I click once, it gives me a preview. If I double click, it opens up that file and folder. So double clicking for file and folders, single click for opening applications, minimizing, opening different links, and so on. So again, we're gonna open our system preferences here and the trackpad options. And we're gonna start with the point and click settings. So the first option is lookup and data detectors and you'll notice that underneath it says force click with one finger. Anytime you see these options with a little arrow that means you can open that up and select how you want this action to be performed. In this case you can also tap with three fingers. We're going to start with force click with one finger and I'll show you what this is all about. So back onto the internet here, we're gonna hover our mouse over this learn more tab and we're gonna take one finger and we're gonna press on the trackpad with a little bit of force. And when we do that, you'll notice that it highlights the word and gives us a quick preview of what's behind that link. So you don't have to click on it and actually go to the page. You can now preview it here. And if you like what you see, you can then click and wherever you click, it's gonna take you exactly to that point of the page. Now, if you don't wanna to go to that page, you can just click the escape button on the top right of your keyboard. It'll remove it. You'll be back to what you were working on. Additionally, you can hover over words that aren't links. So for example, this word here, configuration, if you use that same one finger press with force, it opens up dictionary, thesaurus, and even Siri knowledge options. So you can get a little bit more information of that specific word. Moving back to the system preferences in our trackpad settings, if we change it over to tap with three fingers, it works pretty much the same. The feature is gonna work the same. You just use three fingers. So these three fingers is what I'm gonna use and you just give it a simple tap and it opens up those options or peaks at the link that you have your mouse hovered over. So it's personal preference. For the most part, I use the standards that Apple has set up and I'm gonna leave it at force click with one finger. The second option is secondary click and we have the option to click with two fingers, click in the bottom right or the bottom left corner. We'll start with two fingers here. And basically that's going to act as your right click button on a Mac. So two fingers and we're just going to click and it's gonna open up our right click options just like if you had a right click button on the trackpad. Now if you do switch those options to the right corner for example, now all you're going to have to do is click with one finger on the right corner and it opens up the options. It might seem easier but it actually gets in the way especially if you're trying to open a link and you just happen to click in that right corner, now you're going to have those options rather than opening the link. So for my personal preference I leave it at the two finger click. You can choose whatever you like. The third option is tap to click and this basically turns your trackpad into a tappable trackpad. So if we enable it, now anytime we wanna click something, we just tap and it'll open up a link. We can tap 
and it'll take us back. And now that we've done that, you can even tap with our two fingers and open up the right click options as well. This is something I used to use in the past with my older devices, especially my Windows computers. They used to have two buttons here and those were my right click and single click options. So it just made sense. But now that we have this force touch trackpad, I personally like to have that turned off. Now below the options is some configurations for the click and tracking speed. Starting with click, you can see it says light, medium, or firm, and this is actually relating to the trackpad. This trackpad isn't actually clicking, it's using a motor, a haptic feedback mechanism that vibrates so you feel like you're clicking, but it's just sending you sort of like a pulse. So you can control if you want that pulse to be light, medium or firm and once you set it to that you can give it a test click and you'll feel it that it's different from light to firm light i could barely feel firm is pretty strong but i tend to leave it at medium tracking speed pretty simple how fast the cursor is going to move across the trackpad so i have it set a little bit past the middle if i go to the fastest you'll see how quick it gets across i barely have to move on the trackpad and if i set it to the slowest now i'm barely moving on the trackpad it's going to take a lot of swipes across to get around so i like it a little bit past the halfway point works good for me but test it out and set it to what works best for you Moving down, we have the force click and haptic feedback. If you turn this off, it's going to remove those options like the lookup and data detectors, also some other options where it works with the variable speed and media controls. If you don't like this or you find that when you are trying to click on links, you just happen to be pressing with force on the trackpad, it's getting in the way. Turn those off, it'll make things easier for you, but for me, it's not a problem. I leave it on and I like having these options available to me as well. Scroll and zoom is the next tab. And it starts off with the natural scroll direction. So we talked about this a little bit earlier in the video. And basically that means you're gonna use two fingers and when you scroll upwards, you'll notice the screen travels upwards as well. So upwards, the screen travels upwards like so. If we pull down, the screen is now going downwards. So it just gives you that natural feel. You can invert this, so if we deselect the option. Now, when we scroll down, you'll see that the page moves upwards rather than down. And if we pull upwards on the trackpad, we're going to the top of the page, but it's actually pulling the screen downwards. So keep that in mind as well. So I leave it to natural. Next is zoom in or out. This works just like an iPhone or an iPad. If you have one of those, you just pinch to zoom. So you're gonna use two fingers here and you can just pinch to zoom. So for example, if we wanted to zoom in on this yellow iPhone here, we just pinch and you can see that it opens that up, makes it nice and big. We can see everything a little bit clearer if it's too small and you can pinch inwards as well like so and it'll bring everything back to the original size. Now it's not going to be as responsive as say your iPhone, but it does work pretty well. Smart zoom is a good feature, especially when you have words that are a little bit too small. So the way that this one works is you're gonna actually tap on the trackpad with two fingers. And for example, we have this writing here, it's a little bit small. So if we take those two fingers, we'll just use these ones, double tap, it zooms into a nice size where we can read the writing and you can double tap again to zoom out. And there you go. So it's a good feature, a little bit quicker and a little bit easier than pinching to zoom to try to get it to the perfect size. It just makes things easier for you when you're using the double tap. Rotate is an option which allows you to rotate various screens. I don't use it very much. The only time I've ever used it was with images. So if we open up our finder window here and I open this test image, we can see the direction it's in. I can kind of use two fingers and rotate it on the trackpad. So if I wanted to, I could spin it around like so. It works pretty good. I don't find it to be very useful, especially since most options have a clickable rotation and it's a little bit difficult. It may be good in maps as well, just to kind of pinpoint what you're looking at, but I really don't use it all that much, but it is a feature that's there. And if you don't want to use it with any other option as well, you just deselect to the left, but I'm gonna leave it on for now and we'll move on to the more gesture section. Now this is where a lot of the cool features are located. You can enable and disable them as with any 
And the first one is swipe between pages. There's a few options on how this works. The standard is scroll left or right with two fingers. You can also swipe with three fingers or two or three fingers. Two fingers is more than enough. So the way it works is pretty simple. We're on a website here. Let's say we were on the learn more section and we want it to quickly move back. We can take two fingers and just swipe to the right and it's gonna take us back to the previous page. You can also go forward by swiping to the left and it's really quick, it does help a lot rather than having to click at the top and click your forward button and back buttons. I find I use this probably the most out of any gesture with the MacBook Pro. So swipe left and right to swipe between pages. Moving down, we have swipe between full screen applications. So this is great, especially if you work within full screen applications a lot. So for example, let's just open up our little preview here. We'll put it into full screen. You're going to use three fingers this time and you're just gonna swipe left or right to navigate between. So we don't have any other full screen options open. So when we swipe to the right, it's just gonna take us back to the previous page. If we did have another full screen open, we can now pull to the left, it'll take us back to that page, pull to the right to the previous one. And if we pull all the way to the right, it automatically takes you back to your desktop. So you can then maybe open up something new and utilize that as well. So let's just open this Apple TV and we'll open that one up, swipe, and you can see we can just work a lot quicker within full screen applications. Now, as always, you can modify this. You can set it to swipe left or right with three fingers, which is what I use, or you can even have it set with four fingers. We'll leave it on the standard for now. And we'll move down to notification center. And this one I just disabled by accident, but we'll move down to notification center here. And this is pretty simple. You're just gonna take two fingers and you're gonna swipe from the right side of the trackpad to the left and it's gonna bring up your notification center. It works really easily. I suggest that you start with two fingers off the trackpad and slide on. It's just quicker and easier and that way you can actually feel the edge and you don't have a miss. Like if you try to get it from here, it's a little bit tricky. But from the edge, it's seamless. So if you wanna access your notification center with a swipe, that's how. Mission control. This one allows you to see all of your open windows and applications. You can set this to swipe with three fingers or swipe with four fingers. And it's as simple as taking three fingers and swiping upwards. So three fingers, we swipe up. All of our open windows are available to us. If we swipe three fingers down, they close. Let's just open up a few more here so that we can see all of them. And if we swipe upwards, you'll see all of our applications are open. We can see them swipe down, they close. And tying in with this one is the App Expose. Now this is a cool one, especially if you work within applications that have multiple windows open. By default, this is disabled, but when you enable it, you can configure it to swipe down with three fingers or swipe down with four. I leave it as is. Let's just uh, close a few of these or minimize them for now. And let's just take a look at Safari. So we have one Safari window here, but let's say we were working on multiple to open up a private window. We'll open YouTube and we'll open up another window here. We'll just open up Bing for whatever reason. And if we swipe down with those same three fingers, you see that now we have all the windows that are open within Safari. So sometimes when you have different applications that work within Windows, it's just a lot easier to navigate between them just by pulling down rather than having each individual one and trying to minimize it and then right clicking here to try to find exactly which one you were looking for makes things a lot simpler. I don't use this. I didn't know it was a feature until I was looking through these options, but it's actually pretty useful. So if you want to turn that on, just check the box. Next is Launchpad. This quickly takes you to your Launchpad anytime. You're gonna use these three fingers and your thumb and you're gonna kind of close in like so. So we'll just do that anytime, anywhere on your computer, whatever you have open, you can access your Launchpad so you can open up applications a little bit quicker. It works really quick. If you want to exit, you're just going to open your fingers up like so and then it'll just exit and bring you back to what you were working on. The next option, show desktop. This will bring you back to your desktop anytime. So for example, this time we're gonna open up our fingers like so, and it'll take us back to our desktop. We can just do that from here. 
and we're right back to our desktop, you'll see a little border at the top, but this way you can maybe open up something that you were trying to look up a little bit quicker rather than having to do all of those minimizing and access it. It just makes things a little bit more seamless. Uh, at the same time, when you have that open, you can always close your fingers down and it'll bring you back to what you were working on as well. Now moving on to some tips that you might find useful. We'll start by just opening up a photo here. So we have our test image open and you can see I've drawn all over it. I was testing it out to make sure it worked properly. But if you click on this little pencil or pen icon here, it gives you some editing options. And the one we're gonna look at is the draw. Now, if you've used an iPad or an Apple pencil, you'll know that if you press with different forces on the iPad, you can get different thicknesses of what you're drawing. So it works the same on the trackpad. It only seems to work in this preview window of photos. But if we draw, for example, you can see the line the lighter I press, it gets lighter. The thicker, the harder I'm pressing. And you can see you can really play around with that just like on the iPad and with the Apple Pencil. So if you like to draw, this works pretty good. Uh, hopefully they involve this in other applications, but for now it's only gonna work in your preview window with photos. If you use Calendar, and you have things that are scheduled, for example, you can click on them just to highlight it. But if you do press with force on the trackpad, it'll actually pull up a preview of what that event is all about. So you don't actually have to open it up completely. Same thing if you use maps. You can actually zoom in and out using the pinch to zoom. You can use that rotate to kind of rotate the map around. And if you use the force touch, you can drop a pin exactly where you want it. Now for files and folders, you can use the force press to open a preview. So if we force press on the photo, we can see our preview window here opened up. We can actually open it in the full preview as well, share it from here rotate it, we can do a few things. If you wanna open it fully, you click open, but it gives you a quick preview with some options a little bit quicker. And also if you wanna change the name on the test image, usually you would press once and then press a second time on the actual name and then you could change the name. If you use the force touch on the trackpad on the name, you can press with force and instantly you can start typing. So it's gonna save you one click, not a big deal, but it is a little bit quicker. Now, if you ran into any trouble during this video with any one of these tips, feel free to ask me. I'm happy to help you out. Just leave a comment in the comment box below the video. I try to respond to every comment that comes my way. And also, if you guys have any tips or tricks that you use with the trackpad that I didn't cover in this video, leave it in the comment box below. It'll help everybody out as well. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, share it, and click the bell notification button to be notified when I post new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.